So last weekend we left off dumping in, I would say a dozen or so loads of clay right in this area here. And then we are going to take all of this topsoil that I had stripped back and pushed over into this pile and spread it all back over into this clay area. As I said before, this clay is not very fertile at all. It won't grow much of anything. It didn't even grow any weeds on that pile of clay where I got all of this material from. So we're, we'd need to make a lot of soil amendments to this for this to even be able to grow anything. So that's why we are going to push all that topsoil back onto this area. Now I do have something new that you have not seen before, and that is the TR3 rake. This is a multi-function tool that is able to be used as a box scraper, a land leveler, and a stone rake. Inside here we have a free-floating rake that sits down through the middle of the machine. If I lift up on the back here, a little bit without pinching my fingers, you can kind of see how that lifts up. This follows the contour of the land and it helps fill in any little valleys or knock down high spots. And it doesn't just let a pile of dirt build up in front of it, kind of like what a box scraper would do. It conforms to the contours of the land. With these tires, this prevents the unit from undulating and following the path of the tractor. If you're working up any uneven land, the tractor will kind of do one of these things as it's going through the bumps. As it undulates like that, so will your box scraper. However, with the TR3 rake having wheels, the TR3 rake basically follows its own path and keeps a nice level plane without doing all that undulation. This also has scarifying teeth on it, which are controlled by hydraulic remotes like that. That's very convenient considering the box scraper also has scarifying teeth on it as well, but those you have to stop the tractor, lift, it, lift the box scraper up, and then pull the pins and set each tooth down. Here I can do all of this right from the seat of the operator's platform. As you can see as that self-leveling rake moves up and down and takes down the high spots, that nice big comb in the back kind of fans the material out and just leaves a nice finished look to it. This works out really well for completing or finishing seed beds. So we can work that up with our disc harrow and then use the TR3 rake if we want to level anything off real nice and finish the seedbed and prepare it to the point that it's ready for seed. this thing pretty much levels off any rough ground you might have. All right, so we're gonna move the wheel position on the TR3 rake right now because we're going to turn this into a stone rake from a land leveler. So 
as you can see here on the side, there are a series of five different holes and which hole you put the wheel in just determines how aggressively this unit engages the ground. Right now, I don't want the ground to be engaged very aggressively. I want to just rake the surface stones off. So I'm going to put this wheel in the back, farthest back hole, which will keep the unit suspended and I'm going to lock this rake down so that it doesn't level anymore. It's going to stay in a locked position and just sift through the dirt and scrape up any large stones. And this just simply has a shaft on the hub that slides into the rake unit. I'm gonna have to start the tractor back up because it's drifted down some. I'll drift it down a lot actually. <laughs> Way to slide the wheel in. We have a quick linch pin here. We take the linch pin and we just slide it up in the shaft of the wheel hub and lock it back on. On the back side of the TR3 rake, this is where the land leveler slides up and down inside of here to lock this into one location, or there's a series of holes here. You can just adjust how much that land leveler can actually lift up, but we're going to pin it all the way down. This is also the position that you would use this in for using it as a box scraper. And we'll adjust the pins on both sides. Now, another thing you'll notice in here is I have a hydraulic top link and a hydraulic side link. These two hydraulic features make the TR3 rake very versatile and takes it to a whole new level beyond just what the TR3 rake does. Having that ability to adjust the top link and engage the rake more or engage that fan, that comb in the back that spreads everything out into a nice level pile is very slick and it takes a lot of the work out of it getting off the tractor and using the turnbuckle on the top link to adjust your the way that your implement is engaging the ground. Now I'm going to pull the top link in. We're going to get this comb off the bottom of the ground. We're going to suspend that and we're going to engage the land leveler in between, which is now locked down and going to rake the stones. Here's the hydraulic top link. This also has a hydraulic side link, as I said, which this is great for if you're doing waterways or ditching. You take the wheels off and you can make some really nice waterways and fields. And you just pitch this up. I can go either direction with it. And like I said, you can make some great shallow little waterways that will shed water real nice. For this particular process, I like to run the tractor in first gear. You go too fast and even though the TR3 rake weighs about 1,500 pounds, you, if you get it bouncing too much, it'll bounce over the top of the stones that you're raking and, well, it'll leave the stone behind instead of bringing it along with. So I found that first gear seems to work much better. of just using and, and adjusting the top link which will also pivot the TR3 rake on its wheels and adjust how aggressively that leveling bar engages the ground. Right now you can see it's not pulling a lot of dirt with it. It's more little clumps of soil and stones than anything else which is exactly what we want. This is where the hydraulic top link is a lot nicer just in case if you don't have everything set right it's a lot quicker to make the adjustment from up here with the remote hydraulics than it is to get off and turn the top link to adjust the thread and adjust the length of the top link. I can keep 
feathering that top link the entire time I'm dragging.
that's where this video stops for the flip screen as we ran into some issues. We called it a night. We were having some issues with the locking mechanisms on the sides of the flip screen. Right now, as you can see out here, which I apologize for the darkness, it is a little low lit out here, but we ended up getting a lot of rain after we called it quits for that night. So this area is pretty damp up here yet. We don't want to really do a whole lot of materials handling up here. So what has happened actually right now with the flip screen, this bar is a locking mechanism that stops the bucket from spinning when you want to go back into a normal dig mode. When you reverse this bucket to start screening, that bar actually pivots out and away from the bucket so that way it can start turning. Once you go forward with the flip screen, this bar is supposed to come back down and lock in between these little plates of steel that locks it up. However, this bar on this side of the unit is coming tight against the side of the bucket, which is causing these wear marks through the decal and on the side of the bucket. When we look at the left side over here, we do not have that issue. So there is something that needs to be adjusted in the way the flip screen locking mechanism works. However, we haven't determined what that is yet. So I'm not real sure when we'll be using the flip screen next, but that might be one of our upcoming videos is digging into it and trying to figure out what exactly adjusts that locking bar's actuation time. Until then, we'll see you in the next one.